So you can see with my last payment here, which is payment number nine, remember I'm paying this off sooner than 10 months because I'm making extra payments, but notice now I don't have to make a full payment for there, so I'm make, making something less than the full payment. And if I'm making something less than the full payment, it's not logical for me to do an extra payment for that month. Here's a simple test. If our payment is less than the calculated payment, then our extra payment would be zero. Now, what if our payment is not less than the actual payment? Actually, I'm going to modify this a bit. I'm going to do less than or equal to the payment. So now if my payment is not less than the calculated payment, then it, therefore it must be greater than my calculated payment, which means I will be making an extra payment. But I don't know, is my extra payment going to be a full extra payment, in this case $100, or is it going to be a partial extra payment? So. Clearly, if my extra payment is not zero, it's something. And it could be my previous ending balance minus my payment of that current month plus the interest for that month. Or it could be, comma, it could be the normal extra payment. So it can be one of two things, and I want it to be the smaller of these two items. So I'm going to take these two things and wrap them in a min function. And I'm going to do another closing parentheses. Oh, nope, I do need that. It looks like I forgot to write in my if up here. So let's go ahead and take care of that. If opening parentheses. So let's see this. If payment is less than or equal to my calculated payment, then my extra payment is going to be zero. Otherwise, I'm going to take the smaller of two possible values. It's either going to be my extra payment, which is B7, since I'm referring to that. Input, that needs to be absolute. Or it could be my ending balance minus the payment plus the interest. I'm going to press my Enter key there. We see that gets zeroed out. I'm going to autofill it down. Click on the cell, autofill it up to the second row. And clearly that didn't work, so let me go ahead and modify this. I don't think I want my payment to be less than or equal to the calculated payment because it would often be equal to the calculated payment. So let me do just less than. And I'm going to click on this modification, autofill that down, and now it's starting to make a little bit more sense. Clearly in my last payment row, which happens to be payment number nine in this example, I only have to make a partial payment and then of course um, I don't want to make an extra payment in that scenario. So let's see if we can produce a situation where we have a partial extra payment. Let's see, so my current extra payment is 100 bucks. I'm going to do something like $500 extra payment. That didn't quite do it. How about 510? Here's a, here we go. So now, because I'm making such a big extra payment, you'll see that I pay off the loan very, very fast in just five months. For my last payment row, I am making a full normal payment, and I'm only doing a partial extra payment. The total comes out to 989.01, which happens to be my previous ending balance plus the interest for that last payment. Click on these two, just confirm. I'm looking down here at my calc in the bottom right. That's 989.01. That pays off the loan and zeroes it out. So we now have an amortization table that zeroes out nicely after the last payment row, which means we'll be able to go to total payments and simply make this the sum of all of our payments. And we'll be able to go to total, int total interest paid and make that a sum of all of the interest amounts. And we'll start to have accurate information. If I change my loan to 6,000, if I change my interest rate to 5%, the number of months to 20, and I'm going to do an extra payment of $450, we can see that this 20-month loan actually gets paid off in nine months. 
I'll make a total of $61.13 in payments, and I'll have paid interest of $113, and everything gets zeroed out. In the next video, we'll use some conditional formatting to hide all of these zeroed out cells.